In this video, let's learn about circuit breaking. Circuit breaking is a software design pattern which is basically used when there are services which are interacting with other services for some type of network call like HTTP REST or RPC calls. Uh, if you have some basic knowledge of electronics and electrical engineering, you would have definitely heard of circuit breaking or MCB switch. This is basically an electronic switch which is used to protect our household electrical equipment or the whole circuits. Uh, what actually it does is when there is some uh, anomaly in the circuit, it basically shuts itself to protect the whole circuitry. The circuit breaking concept is also something similar, which we use in the software world where the services are actually interacting with many other services. Uh, let's take an example and understand what exactly it is. Say, for example, this is microservice one, microservice two, and microservice three. And, um, and these three services are interacting with each other synchronously. Okay. When the request comes from microservice one, microservice one is making a call to microservice two, and in turn, microservice two is making a call to microservice three. If every service is uh, available and um, happy, we will definitely get the response from microservice three, and in turn, microservice two will do whatever it's supposed to, and then it gets back, uh, sends back the response to microservice one, and in turn, microservice one will give the response back to whoever it is calling. So this is the happy part, um, but not always all the services are available. There are some times where they goes down or they have some kind of errors, something like that. Say for example, um, what happens if this microservice three is down? Say, let's take this service down and see what happens. So in this case, when the request lands to microservice one, the request goes to microservice two and the request will be made to microservice three. Immediately what we get back is error, right? So immediately microservice 2 will return, receive an error and then maybe this guy can't process something and this guy will respond with error and end of the day we actually get error response back from the microservice 1. And this is bad, right? Because we don't want to send back the errors. Um, we want it to be handled in a better way. So what we can, and, and there are other problems as well. What happens when microservice one calls microservice two and microservice two uh, would have implemented some mechanism to retry if microservice three is giving an error. The same thing, same retry mechanism would have been implemented by microservice one also. Consider we have a re retry mechanism of five times, okay? Now, the, when the request comes to here and the request will be made by MS microservice one to microservice two and the microservice two is calling MS three, because it is not functioning properly or it is down, we are getting the error back. Consider this is heavily loaded and that's why we are getting 500 uh, error back. Uh, it is not able to process the new coming request. Maybe it is up, but it is totally overloaded. Okay, now it is overloaded. The when we make a request to MS3, it is returning back uh, with some kind of weird error. Maybe you know, memory is out or something. Since we have uh, implemented retry mechanism of five times, our microservice two will keep on retrying microservice three for five more times. What happens is it will uh, actually make the situation worse for MS3, right? Because first of all, microservice three is overloaded and it is not really behaving properly. On top of it, because we got the error, the microservice two is making more calls and then overloading uh, or overwhelming this microservice tree. And this is bad. So we need to do, we need to have a better way of handling these kind of situation. So consider what, what would have happened if we didn't had a retry mechanism as well. As soon as we got the error back from MS3, MS2 would have written error, uh, MS1 would have written back the error. Uh, even in that case, the, from the UI, maybe the user would have refreshed it again. Again, the request will come back and then the, uh, the request will go to MS3 and again, it is uh, not letting MS3 to recover itself. Um, and anyway, anyway, somehow, uh, irrespective of whether we are having a retry mechanism or not, somehow this uh, Microsoft S3 is still overloaded and we are not letting this uh, service recover um, itself. And, and we could do much better than that. So how do we make things better? Okay, let's implement circuit breaking. So, and understand what are the features circuit breaking supports. 
say uh, we have circuit breaking uh, implemented in our uh, microservices. Okay. Now, how does circuit breaking will help uh, to make the situation better? So the first feature which I'm going to explain is how uh, the circuit breaking will help to heal this microservice three, which is not behaving properly. When the request comes to microservice one, it calls microservice two and microservice two is calling microservice three. And we immediately know in microservice two that microservice three is not behaving properly. The circuit breaking or the circuit breaker will come to know that the service which we just called is returning an error. It actually remembers or make a note of which service failed how many times, okay? It remembers that the microservice tree just returned an error. Circuit breaking supports to return cached response. That means that whenever we receive some error from the service which we are supposed to get the response, we can actually configure the circuit breaker to return some cached response. What is a cached response is the successful response which we received the previous time uh, or before the service was failing. We can configure it that way, that way. So we actually get the cached response back when the service is failing. So we don't actually receive an error here. We actually receive successful 200 response with cached response just because we implemented circuit breaking here. Otherwise, if we didn't have circuit breaking, we would have actually uh, got the error because of this service. Okay. Now, the first feature, which is cached response. Okay. Or what, uh, what circuit breaker could have done is instead of returning the cached response, we could have actually redirected call from MS2 to some other service, which actually is a, you know, supplementary for, um, for that service. Say, for example, if, for example, we are trying to process some video, right? Um, now, this service is a video processing service. Now, this is implemented by our own team. We also know that sometimes if it fails until it recovers, we can actually use some third party video processing service. In that case, okay, this is a third party uh, video processing service. So when the request comes here to the MS1, MS2 actually calls, uh, MS1 calls MS2 and MS2 is calling MS3 and we got the error response. And circuit breaker we actually got to know that this video processing um, microservice is failing. Now actually we can make a call to the third party microservice, which actually does the video processing and get back the response and we can still make the service working, right? That's also possible. That is called as fallback mechanism. So we can actually fall back to a different service or alternative service when the actual service which we are supposed to get the response from is failed. Okay. Now, one more advantage is I'm just going to clear this thing. And one more advantage of using circuit breaking is it lets heal this particular microservice. Right. How? How exactly is when the request comes here and we, when the circuit breaker got to know that this guy is not behaving properly, instead of, um, and I mentioned that it actually remembered that how many times this guy was failing. So the next time when the request comes in, it doesn't really make a call to this guy because it knows that from past two to three times it was failing. So let's leave this guy alone. Let's not overwhelm this service. Let it heal for some time. We can actually configure that time uh, until which we are not going to talk to this guy. Maybe say, for example, if it have configured for five uh, minutes or something, even though thousands of requests are coming to microservice two, our circuit breaker will actually won't call the microservice three because it knew that we were getting a lot of response, error response. So it basically stops here. It can do two things. Either it can give the cache response or it can fall back to some other service. So that way it is not at all sending the request. It actually disconnects this request and let it recover. How it can recover is basically if it had any pending request in the queue, it can process and finish it off. So the resources are available or it can shut down and uh, a new instance are deployed by the orchestrator or some admin or whatever the automatic mechanism of scaling. 
or you know error handling. So by disconnecting this, we actually let this service recover. So these are the basically advantages. So uh, what do you call that? Recover. Um, so it lets microservices recover also. So these are the main three main um, you know features uh, which actually uh, the circuit breaking um, mechanism supports. Um, so there is one more important concept to learn is uh, after timeout what happens? The circuit breaker now knows that this was failing and we have set five minutes timeout to not to talk to this guy. What happens after five minutes? After five minutes it makes uh, when the request appears here uh, for one request it actually tries to contact this guy. If this guy successfully responds with a, um, whatever response it was supposed to without error, that means that circuit breaker will understand, okay, now that this microservice is healed, now we can actually keep on sending the request. From subsequent to that time, all the requests which are appearing to microservice 2 and will be actually forwarded to microservice 3, and then we are expecting the response back. So we will be not be sending the cache response or we will not be sending to the third uh, our requests to third party side or anything like that. So everything comes back to normal. So this is it. So all we have to understand is uh, the state diagram of uh, circuit breaking. Um, it is much simple. Um, I just going to write it here. here. So this is the state diagram of uh, the circuit breaking pattern. You don't really need to remember all of this stuff. This is just to understand whatever I said in the state diagram, uh, using the state diagram. So what happens is, um, what, it, what does closed means? Closed is basically the whole loop is closed. That means that everything is working fine. What is open means? The link is open. That means that we, are, we can't really complete the whole cycle. So when I, when in circuit breaking pattern, open means the link is disconnected or the connection is disconnected for now. So the whole cycle is not finished. So that's what it means. So this is closed, the loop is closed. When it has not happened, the loop is disconnected, that is basically open and half open and I'm gonna explain that. Say for example, when everything is working fine, that means it is closed. We are in the closed state. Now, if this guy is failing, if this microservice is failing, what happens is we definitely goes, the, the circuit breaking pattern will disconnect this link, okay? And starts returning the cached response, right? In that case, we actually from closed, we actually went to open state. Now the circuit is open here. So we went to open state. So we have set some, I, I told you that we have set some timeout after for timeout of five minutes or something, what this circuit breaker will do is it checks, it makes one call and then checks if this service is responsive or not. That means it actually makes, after this delay of say five minutes, it actually makes a call. It, it actually goes to half open state. That means that it is actually checking whether the service is responsive or not. If it returns uh, the response successfully, that means that we can go back to the closed state. That means we can complete the whole uh, request response cycle, or if still this guy is returning the error code, that means that we can go back to, we can, yeah, we can go back to open state. So this is the whole state diagram, just, just for your information.